So the last one that I wanted to talk about was taking some spatial data that's in MapInfo and getting that into uh, um, into PostGIS ready for being able to be used within ArcMap. Ah. So here I've got some city parks data, which is a bunch of uh, polygons, city park polygons, so we could take a look at those. Here's a trick you can probably say inspect, or you're going to ins um, inspect them. Yep. And let's that take brings a look up our data like. inspector, ready to go. So she says OK, and with luck. Ah, yeah, but you know what? This is a zip file. Oh, wow, you're being tricky. So this is actually new in 2013 Service Pack 1 or No, it was, it was in the release, yeah. That we can have the ability now to read data right out of the zip file. So I can uh, click on this and it will figure out that in that zip file there's a map info file and in the map info file I've got some polygons. And this is a table viewer you've got down at the bottom. Yes. For a database people, I think view the world as one big table, so it should be exactly. very Exactly, and so this is also new in 2013, and this is wonderful. So yes. those of you that have, are the expert users and haven't yet gone to the data inspector, this is the reason for going to it. Yeah, it's, it's the, the killer app. Yeah. And actually, I know this is off-roading, Robin, but why don't you hit the button at the top that puts the table into the top thing, right beside the 3D view. Okay, right here. Because yeah, database so people would view the world in this way. <laughs> exactly. If, and if your data is non-spatial, this is a really good way to do this. In fact, it'll start up like this. Yes. And so going back to being able to see both of them, when I click on a feature here, you'll notice it goes to that feature line in my table. Yeah. But I've still got the old window that I'm used to that from the universal viewer showing what my uh, data looks like over right. here. Right. Okay, so that's the source that I'm going to take, and I'm going to load it up into my uh, PostGIS. So one of the things I had to do here, this was rather an interesting little problem, because some of my um, polygons, if you look at them, I've got one here, that's actually an aggregate of polygons. Oh, it's a multi-part. So it's a multi-part polygon. So you can see when I uh, click on it that I've got three little pieces to it. Yes. And ArcMap didn't like that. Okay. So the first thing I had to do was actually de-aggregate it. So PostGIS was happy enough. PostGIS would have been happy, but but to view it in that client, and that's one of the issues you get into about. You know, I noticed earlier you went from multi-point to point. You basically mm -hmm. have to configure the database in a way that's happy for the client that might be using it, because yes. the client may or may not support all the dialects or the ways of using your PostGIS. Yes, and so here I sort of had some interesting problems with this little part of it actually, because I was going to let PostGIS, the writer itself write to those simple polygons, you'll see the geometry type is a PostGIS polygon, and it actually de-aggregated them for me as it wrote them. Yes. But the problem was that I had set my ID field uh, as a primary key, yes. and my uh, I was getting uh, constraint violations because I had multiple primary keys that were Got the same it. value. So it, it was an interesting process here. So first I de-aggregate them myself, yeah. and then I count them. And so counting them allowed me to give them each a unique identifier that then was unique for every single polygon going into my Right, output. so you, you basically assign your own ID across all the, the simple polygons you get. Yes. And you for some reason you needed to recalculate the areas? Oh, it never had an area. You it never had an area before, so I wanted to um, recalculate the area. So yeah. that was a simple transformer that just allows me to calculate area and put it into a, an attribute that's on my destination. Yeah. And then copying just to copy and clean up my particular names that I wanted to use into my database. The alternative name. Yes. It seemed a little easier to say than name alt. Right. Okay, so that was the last part of my um, last part of my workspace here, so I'll just run that bit. And then we'll go over to post just and take a look at what I've managed to fill up. Because you've never actually database. shown us that you've actually no, done anything. That's right. So let's go and take a look. The clever elephant there? Yep. PG admin. Pretty um, common application if you're Again, used to working. Again, a DBA would use this. It's kind of scary. Yeah. So here's my PostGIS 2.0 uh, database with or connection with my PostGIS database. Bunch of schemas, and my FME schema is the one that I've been working within, and I've got a bunch of tables in here. So if we take a look, here is my City Parks table with the various columns. So there's my uh -huh. alternative name column. Yeah. And in fact, I can go and look at this um, with my data viewer here. And so there are my different identifiers and the names. And in fact, this table I created with OIDs. So oh, yeah, okay. I could have uh, perhaps used those. But again, um, Post just wasn't happy with them. So it was better to stick with a, a proper ID field. Um, so similarly, what else did I load in here? My address points 
geography type. So here if I look at those columns and if I look at the definition of that table, you'll see that the geometry type was uh, a geography here. So there's my geography data type. Again, we've got a constraint on the primary key and we've got a, a, an index on that column. So those are the, the tables that we've loaded in at this point and then my water tables down here.